The only drawback uh, with a function prototypes or function declarations like this is when uh, the, the situation changes. For instance, you decided to add an integer parameter to your function. You have to remember to go back and change function declaration just uh, uh, you know to to stay um, uh, you know exactly to, to keep it exactly the same. So if you read the textbook, if you if you decided to buy the, the textbook, uh, you will see that the the, the chapter there discusses uh, this uh, this exact situation. But in my in, in my situation, I really don't need uh, any parameters because I'm using a global variable, and this is going to be part of our uh, n part of our next uh, segment uh, discussion. Okay, so very simple rule: function prototypes go to the top, and then you can just keep adding your code, and as long as it works. You can forget what ping and pong does, uh, and just remember that you need to call one of them, and it'll work. All right, so uh, back to the presentation. Other questions? OK, back to the presentation. So we found that uh, function declarations or function prototypes are is the solution to this initial problem with compiler not recognizing function names and giving us those strange complaints. So we uh, do that. Uh, a few observations. I would like to make them. Did ping pong program work as expected? How many shots were were printed? And uh, let's let's uh, go back. Uh, hopefully, uh, I can build it again. Okay, everything seems fine. Now I can go and uh, just run it again. So, how many shots were played? It says uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven altogether, right? So all together, all together, it seems. We played seven, uh, seven of these shots, and uh, it's simply because the condition says that as shot count goes above six, okay, as the shot count goes above six, then stop. So the challenge is, uh, and above six, of course, is seven. So as soon as we hit seven, we we make an exit. So change the program to play exactly six shots. Uh, consider using a new variable like max shots or something. Okay. So what I could do, I could go go to main and say um, std uh, c out um, and display prompt like this and say uh, how many shots uh, to play. Okay, and uh, this will. This will be my prompt. Then ask the user to say, uh, give me uh, the uh, max uh, shot count, right? Max shot count like this. Of course, again, before I use this variable, uh, the maximum shot count, I need to declare it. Otherwise, I'm going to get another compiler error. So I'm just going to say that this is another integer variable, and I will say whatever zero, right? The user will give me uh, give me the value. Okay. So if I create this uh, maximum shot count variable directly inside main, it becomes a local variable. This local variable is is unknown to ping and pong, but this is where I intend to use this maximum shot count, right? I intend to use it instead of hard-coded six, so I can control how many shots to play, right, in this program, potentially, okay? So, uh, so uh, the, the problem is how do I pass the value of maximum shot count to my functions, okay? Um, I guess uh, one of the one of the ticks would be um, uh, to provide this as input parameter integer. I can use the same uh, variable name uh, because the mean uh, the meaning of this uh, variable is this exactly the same. Okay, so I can add integer shot count directly to uh, to my functions. Right, and then use it like this, like use uh, use it to uh, uh, part of my condition, where I compare the actual count with the maximum count which the user has specified. And of course, what I need to change is 
uh, number one, I need to provide this as part of my function declarations. Otherwise, compiler will give us all kinds of uh, errors and, and complaints. Okay, so, so this should be updating. We need updating of these function declarations, number one. And number two, because our functions now expect an integer argument Every time we make a call, we need to pass it on, right? So we need to say the first call is from main and says call ping, call this function right here. And uh, when I make a function call, you don't have to specify the, uh, the, the type of the variable because it's already known from here, right? It has already been declared as an integer variable. And therefore, we populate it with some value. And when we make function calls, we simply say, OK, take this, uh, take this variable and use it. And uh, as, we, um, as we call ping and pong, they too, uh, they too need, uh, basically, they need uh, uh, to pass on this information. OK? So hopefully now, I can control, I can control the, uh, 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 by asking the user how many shots you want to play. Um, I can also make it so that um, as soon as we reach uh, that specific number of shots, I can just change it to equal, equal, not greater than, but change my conditions to equal, equal. Now, equal, equal in C, C++, Java, and other similar, similar languages with similar syntax represent comparison, not assignment. Single equal sign is assignment. Uh, equal equal sign is just comparing the values and see if they're the same, right? So I'm making this change to this program and uh, see how it works. All right, so, I, so my changes were, again, that I added input parameters to my functions. And you can see my environment highlights them immediately as soon as I double click and select a word. So see if I can compile this. OK. Um, and if I can run it, so obviously to see the results of my compile, I have to say view logs again and scroll down and see, oh, okay, it seems like everything was fine. And then uh, we're going to say uh, just uh, run it. So how many shots to play? Let's say I want eight, okay? Hit enter, let's, uh, let's count them. So I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And this way, I pretty much do control what's going on with, uh, with this uh, specific sample. Now, it may seem like a lot of code for you, but this is, I'm just trying to demonstrate earlier on to you what it normally takes to make a decision, make a change. And of course, I know that there's lots of syntax involved in this code. So uh, just uh, remember that uh, perhaps we can demonstrate it one more time at the runtime. Uh, what's going on is that we can essentially try, try one more demonstration for this. Let me resize it and change, uh, okay. Let me resize it and um, make it all vi visible and we can make it just a little larger like that um, I don't care I, I'm not going to waste time for the uh, for this uh, stuff uh, so uh, let's just um, highlight what's going on so uh, first we we enter this um, just switch to a larger marker so I can see it on my screen. Okay, so this is where we enter the program, okay? And of course, as we enter into this program, uh, we, uh, we get the stack frame for main. This is the memory where it creates this maximum shot count variable, right? So this is main uh, stack frame. I want you to, to realize that the stack frame has nothing to do with the executable code. All of the executable code goes somewhere down here into the text segment of memory. All this executable code there. But the function gets its own 
uh, space for for local variables. And then we uh, on this line right here we make a first call into ping. So we decide to call ping. So of course, uh, this time ping is expecting this input parameter, maximum shot count. So we have created a variable, uh, this maximum shot count, which is populated by main because we asked the user, obviously is located right here in computer memory. And it's part of the uh, main function stack frame, right? So when we then try using this uh, ping, uh, and right here I can, I can probably just uh, highlight this place, right? So I'm talking about this initial function call that we attempt uh, to make. We need to pass this parameter maximum shot count to another function. So let's see what happens here. What happens here that, remember, in, uh, in programming, uh, what happens is that the, the, the arguments are, are uh, passed around by simply copying them. So this parameter is copied and placed somewhere on the stack. This is all that happens. A copy is made, a copy is made before even attempting to make any function calls. Then eventually we do make a function call and we transfer our ex execution into function name ping, right? So it does its own thing. Well, guess what? This, its own version of maximum shot count, which uses the same name, right, is going to be placed in memory in such way that it will be pointing exactly to this memory location. And therefore, it will get a copy of the, of the, uh, the ping here, ping, the, which is the stack, stack frame for the ping function to execute. It will get initially, say, we, we said seven, right, when, or, or eight when we entered the initial value. So it will get the same value and the copy of it. And then, and then, of course, e, the um, uh, the counter. Um, I guess we just keep passing it, right? So before we can, uh, we call pawn, which would be on this line. So now we invoke ping, right? And the next thing, that major event, major function call, is going to be pawn. And again, we keep copying the maximum shot count, which we initially got from the user, and we keep pushing it, on, you know pushing it on the stack or copying it on the stack. So uh, this uh, function ping before it calls pawn makes a copy of it somewhere in memory like this and then make a, a call, uh, makes a call into pawn. And then the, the pawn organizes it, its stack frame like this. And guess what? Its own version of input parameter maximum uh, shot count is pointing to this memory location. And it just keeps going on and on and on until we begin to return. So all of them, all of these function calls get a copy of the initial value. It's not the same initial value. So the moral of the story is, by looking at this, when we switch back, back to the code, despite the fact that I, I use, let me resize it so we can fit this um, on our screen. Despite the fact that I used it so many different types, uh, times in my program, this maximum shot count uh, variable. This variable, uh, this variable, uh, the scope of uh, the scope and visibility of the maximum shot count. Uh, that we created in initially in main is limited to the scope of function main. Nobody else knows what it is, uh, including these other functions. So it's, it's misleading kind of like that we use the same variable name. But every time we have this input parameter or any time we create another variable with, uh, with the name that appears to exist elsewhere, it's always a local variable that belongs to that function and therefore this shot count compared to this shot count and compared to this shot count are three different variables. Uh, yes, question. Wouldn't it have been easier to make that